Red Sea Bream, or Japanese Snapper, has been eaten in Japan since ancient days, and there was a time when the word fish meant Red Sea Bream. Even today, Sea Bream is known as the King of Fish, and served for the celebration cuisine not only in the sushi restaurants. This movie demonstrates how to break down a snapper and prepare for a dish. Also, a round fish like snapper are grouped together because they share a similar bone structure. Therefore, learning how to break down snapper will be helpful in preparing this group of fish in general. Using a fish scaler, remove the scale by scrubbing from the tail to the head. Snappers have hard scales, so you may need to push strong with power. If you don't have a scaler, Deba knife can also be substituted. Stand the blade completely vertically against the fish in order to remove only the scales without damaging the skin. Wash the fish with running water. Sea water contains some biblio, which causes food poisoning. Fresh fish from supermarkets may still have some bacteria on it, so wash carefully before preparing. Biblio can only survive in seawater, so you can kill them with fresh water. Place the fish on the cutting board with the head to the left and the belly facing you. If you are left-handed, reverse the direction of the head of the fish here and equivalent directions elsewhere, and use your left hand to wield the knife throughout the instructions. Starting at the anus, insert the tip of the knife into the fish and draw the knife up to the head end, cutting open the belly. In order to cut off the head, you can identify the straight line from the right next to the belly fin along the pectoral fin through the head end. Make the initial cut from the belly fin by using the lower half of the Deba knife. Push the blade to follow the line. Keep the knife at a 45 degree angle toward the head of the fish so that you can reduce the loss of the edible flesh compared to standing the blade to cut straight down. Slice down to the backbone but not through the fish. Turn the fish over Use the knife at the same 45 degree angle to start. Repeat the procedure in reverse. Grab the head and tail to break the backbone. Remove and discard the entrails. Some entrails have a strong odor and or extremely bitter and can contaminate the flesh, so try not to damage them. Rinse the cavity with cold running water. Place the four fingers of your left hand on the body and gently press down on the backside so the stomach rises up. Keep the initial cut shallow so that you know where the spines are. Starting at the anus, make a shallow cut through the skin toward the tail, going through just above the anal fin. You should feel the spines underneath the knife blade. Stay as close to the spines as possible to waste less flesh by leaving it on the bone. Use your left thumb to lift and open the front end of the top fillet. Place the knife at the same entry point and make a deeper cut, sliding the knife all the way along the backbone. Turn the fish counterclockwise. Place the fish with the dorsal fin facing you. Keep the initial cut shallow so that you know where the spines are. Place the knife at the tail and along the soft dorsal fin and cut toward the head end, staying just above the spiny dorsal fin. You should feel the spines underneath the knife blade as you work. Lift and open the fillet. Make a deeper cut to slice open along the backbone. Disconnect the top fillet from the backbone.
you can slightly lift up the belly side to cut only the backbone without damaging the flesh. Turn the fish over and repeat the procedure in reverse. This is a basic procedure to cut a fish into fillets, so called sanmai oroshi in Japanese. No matter how big or small the fish is, you can basically follow this instruction. Use your knife blade upward to disconnect the ribcage bones from the backbone. Hold the ribcage with your forefingers of your left hand and place the knife under the rib cage. Keep the knife against the rib cage and slice it off little by little. You should feel the rib bones above the knife blade as you work so that you waste less flesh by leaving it on the bone. The skin of the fish protects the flesh from oxidation, so it is best not to remove it until just before you are ready to use the fish. Place the fillet skin side down with the tail end to the left. Hold down the very edge of the tail firmly with your fingertip. Place the knife tip and slice down to the skin. Using a small sewing motion, make enough skin exposed to grasp. Then hold the skin firmly with your left hand and continue cutting until you reach the end of the fillet, separating the skin fully from the flesh. The point here is to set the knife angle slightly downward and shake the skin with your left hand while your knife blade is locked with the fixed angle. This is one of the hardest process since the snapper skin is thinner than that of salmon and more likely to ruin the flesh. But as you practice, the beautiful striped color remains on the skin. Snappers contain the rich flavor, fat, and vitamins in between the skin and the flesh. Therefore, parboiling the skin is also known as a professional cooking method to enjoy its nutrition and unique texture of the skin. Prepare some boiled water and ice water. Place the filleted snapper skin side up on a cutting board and tilt downward in the sink so that the water can run through. Cover the fillet with kitchen towel and pour the boiled water over the fillet until the skin gets thoroughly warped. Dip it into the ice water immediately and cool down. Use a towel to dry the fillet. Cut the fillet in half to remove the pin bones along the middle of the fillet.
Slice the filet into pieces for sushi or sashimi. Snapper has relatively chewy meat, so the thinner slice will be easier to bite off. Also watch the video about how to slice fish for more in detail. Decorate on the plate as you desire.